speak to our hearts. Give us our understanding of everything you are going to say and give us uh, the grace to put them to practice in Jesus' name. Relevant scriptures that will open our eyes of understanding and that will propel us to do as you are going to direct us. Give it unto us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Uh, what the Lord wants to use to speak to us at this time is the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our test is taken from the book of Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Verses, verse 16 rather. Romans chapter 1, we are going to read verse 16. The Bible says here, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. The gospel of Christ. These are awesome words. For we read about the gospel according to St. John, the gospel according to St. Mark, the gospel according to St. Luke, and the gospel according to St. Matthew. And none of these are said to be the power of God unto salvation, but the gospel of Christ. Why? Because it is the sum total of them all. The sum total of the gospel according to St. Mark, the uh, gospel according to St. John, the gospel according to St. Luke, and the gospel according to Saint Matthew, the gospel of Christ is the sum total of all. And it is to everyone that believeth. There is none that is exempted. If one can believe, this gospel of Christ is uh, to everyone that believeth, be it Greek, be it Jews, be it Gentile, be it anybody, be it, uh, white or black. Uh, or whatsoever part of the world one may live, and any ethnic group of any nation, it is for everyone that believe it. Uh, Christ has uh, made it so plain and easy for every one of us. We are going to look at it in three points so that we might get a better understanding of this uh, message of this morning, which is the gospel of Christ. The first point we are going to look at is preach the gospel of Christ. A commandment preach the gospel of Christ a commandment the second point is how to preach the gospel of Christ how to preach the gospel that's the second point and the last point is danger of not preaching the gospel danger of not preaching the gospel we're going to look at the first part which is preach the gospel of Christ a commandment in Mark chapter 16 verse 15 Mark chapter 16, verse 16. Here the Lord says, clearly, in a clear way, he said, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The Lord said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is a commandment, it's not a suggestion. God is commanding his disciples and as he said to them and he's saying unto us because he said what he said unto them he said unto us all and so we are actually getting the same commandment he said we should go into all the world and preach the gospel he's talking to his disciple uh, of them and by extension to who are us who are his disciple of today he's asking us to go and preach the gospel to every creature. This commandment is repeated in several other passages of the Holy Scripture. We can look at uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 2. Luke chapter 9, verse 2. It says here, And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God, and to heal the sick. To preach before healing. Preaching precedes everything. Is the word. The healing is just bonus. The preaching 
precede everything. The Lord wants us to go and preach the word. Preach to everyone and tell the world uh, about Christ. Let the whole world know. Tell it on the mountain. Tell it in the valley. Tell it everywhere. He said, go and preach the kingdom of God. He sent them and he's sending us to go and preach the kingdom of God of god and so we see this is what the lord is telling on the verse 60 of the same chapter 9 of luke verse 16 verse 16 he said jesus said unto him let the dead bury their dead but go thou and preach the kingdom of god Jesus is telling someone, you know, there are places where they do second burial and things like that. So he's telling, you've already buried your father. What are you talking about second burial and all those things? Let the dead bury their dead. But you go and preach the gospel. Don't join them in doing that second burial and all those things they are doing. Let those that are of the world, that are dead spiritually, that are, are not alive spiritually, let them continue all those uh, worldly way of things. What God wants, after you've lost your loved one, you are uh, laying down, buried him, just like Abraham did. Abraham didn't go and do second burial. We understand. So Jesus is saying, let the dead uh, bury their dead to go and be doing the second burial and uh, all those these things that they want to now remembering and reburying him and uh, uh, all those. He said, no, leave that to the dead. But you that is born again, that is a child of God, now you have uh, already buried your loved one. Now you go and preach the gospel, not spending time to say you want to do second burial and all those things they do. Uh, and do yearly. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. He said, we should go and preach the gospel. There are many that are dying, many that need to know the Lord before they die. Before they die and go to hell, we can deviate them from hell and direct them to the path of heaven. In Mark chapter 10, Mark chapter 10, verse 7. Mark chapter 10, <clears throat> verse 7. For this cause shall in Mark chapter 10, verse 7. I think I got, <clears throat> I got the wrong place. Let's, let's go to Acts chapter 5, please. Acts chapter 5, verse 20. Acts 5, 20. Acts chapter 5, verse 20. <clears throat> I'll read 19 and 20. But the angel of the Lord by night <clears throat> opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. These are the apostles. They were in prison because of the gospel of Christ. But the angel of the Lord came and opened the door of the prison unto them. He said, I'm opening this door of prison to you. It's not for you to escape and run away. It's for you to go and preach. Go and do what? Preach. You know, uh, some will do what they will think is for them to do what? To run away and escape. They'll say, ah, I'm leaving that territory. And run away. He said, No, it's for you to go and preach. So the Lord is saying, uh, Preach the gospel of Christ is a commandment that we must keep. And that is why the angel of the Lord opened the door of the prison unto them. He said, Go and preach. And we see in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 2. The Bible says here, Preach the word. Preach the word. Be instant in season. Out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exalt with long, all long suffering 
and doctrine. You see, it is so important. It's a great commandment. So that, that is why here in 2 Timothy chapter 4, better to read from verse 1. So that we understand that it is so grave, it's so heavy, that it's something we must obey. He said, I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Preach the word. God the Father is hearing the Son and the Holy Ghost. They are hearing this charge. Preach the word. Be instant in season. Be instant in season. Don't say this is not a good time to preach. Every time is a good time to preach. Preach the word. Instant in season. Out of season. Reprove. Rebuke. Exalt with all long suffering and doctrine. You say preaching the gospel of Christ include reproving, rebuking, exalting with all long suffering and doctrine. That is, it is not everything you say people will like. When you are reproving those that are backsliding and are doing the wrong thing. They will not like it. When you are reproving ministers that have deviated from the way of God and leading people to hell in their thousands, they will not like it. People say, don't you know you are offending people with the way you are preaching? The Bible says, we should do what? He said, reprove, rebuke, exalt with all long suffering and doctrine. All long suffering. As you are preaching the right thing rebuking reproving and exalting you have to have long suffering because people will not like it but you have to do it you have to do the right thing in order for some to be saved verse uh, uh, 3 before we go to verse 3 let's quickly look at jude jude that's uh the book before revelation jude verse 22 and 23 he said i read from verse 21 so that you understand better keep yourself in the love of god how by preaching and rebuking and doing the right thing keep yourself in the love of god looking for the mercy of our lord jesus christ unto eternal life and of some have compassion making a difference have compassion, making a difference, showing them the difference of the truth and the error. You understand? And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire by rebuking, reproving, and exalting with all long suffering. You are pulling them out of the fire, eating even the garments spotted by the flesh. The garments. Those that say that they are uh, now believer, they are now minister, and you see that their garment is spotted by the flesh, worldliness is in it, hating it. The garment spotted by the flesh. So you see, all these things are important. It's part of the preaching, preaching the gospel of Christ, preach the gospel of Christ, a commandment. Back to Second Timothy, chapter uh, four, verse three. He now says, "For the time will come." When they will not endure sound doctrine. They can't endure sound doctrine. They are looking for doctrine that will permit a lot of things. That will make them to do things that are not pleasing to God. That will uh, please the flesh. Like dancing and many other things. He said, but after their own lust. After their what? Their own lust. Shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears what do the people like to hear what do they like to hear what do they like to hear but what they like to hear will not take them to heaven they may come in their multitude but it will not take them to heaven it only prepare them for hellfire and such ministers that help them to uh, uh to to give them what they want so that there will be many and taking them to hellfire he shouldn't expect himself to be in heaven. 
Because whosoever is taking multitude to hell, himself must end up in hell. Verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. They shall turn away their ear from the truth, but you must preach the gospel of Christ. Whether they turn their ears away from the truth or not, it's a commandment. Preach the gospel of Christ and shall be turned unto fables. They will turn unto fables. Things that are not actually spiritual. Wisdom of men. That will make people to clap. Instead of turning to Christ, they will clap for the minister. You understand? So, you, you see, fables. You see, that man has wisdom. But that's wisdom of men. Paul said, we are not, I think he didn't come unto uh, the Corinthians with the wisdom of men. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Reading from verse 1. He said, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech. See, see the speech, see the grammar, see this. He said, Came not with the excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. You are from what uh, culture? You are from uh, what tribe? You are from. I determine not to know all that. What's your level of education? What's your. I determine not to know that. Are you a uh, Spanish? Are you a uh, black? Are you a white? I determine not to know that. All I want to know and determine to know is Christ Jesus and Him crucified. You understand? So, you see, all the things people are now bringing in and making it to be as part of the gospel of Christ. Paul said, no, it's not part of it. It will not go with excellency of speech, of wisdom, declaring the testimony of God, but save Christ, Jesus, and Him crucified. He said in verse 3, and I was with you in weakness, as if he knew nothing, and in fear, and in much trembling, not shouting on the people, you understand, but in fear, in much trembling, in weakness, as if he knew nothing, see? you know, so, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Enticing words of man's wisdom. You know, they entice people with man's wisdom. It's a but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. The spirit of God he speaks the truth. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So we see the Lord is telling us that we need to preach the gospel of Christ. In verse uh, 2 Timothy again, chapter 4, verse uh, 4, he said, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But wash thou. What are you to do? Wash thou in all things. Endure afflictions. They will say, ah, is he the only one going to heaven? He said this, he said this. He can see everybody doing it. He said, no. Is she the only one going to heaven? He said, no, this, no, that. He, he, but everybody is doing it. He said, but watch down in all things. And your afflictions. Don't bother about all those afflictions of words they bring. Do the work of an evangelist. Evangelize. Preach the gospel of Christ. There will be some that will believe the truth. Not everybody will want to go to hellfire. So we preach the gospel of Christ. Those that want the truth, we embrace the truth. Those that don't want the truth, we not embrace the truth and they will end up in hellfire. 
and in hellfire they will remember. The Lord will help us that we will give the truth and preach the truth in Jesus' name. He said, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry by preaching what Christ has asked us to preach. If you refuse to obey this commandment of the Lord, many will not believe in the Lord and they will die and go to hell fire because they did not hear the gospel of Christ. They did not hear because you refused to preach to them, though the Lord did send you to them. Though the Lord did what? Did send you to them. You know, some people will say, who sent you? They are expecting to uh, see to, for you to say, a man sent you. No. If a man sent you, you will pray, say what the man wants you to say. But if God sent you, you will say what God wants you to say. Now, let's look at who sent us. And let's go to the book of Romans chapter 10. Romans 10, verse 9 to 17. Romans 10, verses 9 to 17. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with thy mouth, with thy heart, I mean to say, with the heart man believed, believed unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference. Between the Jew and the Greek. We need to say it again. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. You know there are people that cannot do without their local language. And they now uh, make other languages to be as if they are inferior. It's nothing. Even in the place of work. That is not their local language. That is the official language there. They keep continue with their local language and that can cause a lot of damage and now we that are say we are believer we should know that the law doesn't make difference so whatsoever is the official language in where we are we use that to get souls we understand we don't uh, make it in a way that it will now hinder others like somebody was saying he said you see, that is what I don't like. That is what I don't like. He's on the phone in the office and he's using his local language. And how will I know what I'm to do? I am not from his language. I am here from I'm an American. And how will I understand what he's saying on the phone with his local language to another uh, official in the workplace? So, now... Later, let's assume this person is a believer. He now try to preach later to that American uh, woman. Will that one buy that preaching? No. Because he has already seen this person as a biased person. So, you see, but here it says, For there is no, verse 12 again, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom in him? Of whom they have not heard. They have not heard of him. And how shall they hear without a preacher? If the preacher don't go out to preach. If the evangelists don't go out to evangelize. How will they hear? How will they hear about him? How will they believe on him? And how shall they preach except they be saints? The Lord said go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He has sent us. So going out to preach, you are not going on your own. Who sent you? Who sent us? Is the Lord. He said, and how shall they preach? I said they be sent, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace 
and bring glad tidings of good things, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. We say yes, as they go out, as the evangelists go out, as the preacher goes out, not all of them will believe the gospel. He said, Isaiah said, Lord, who had believed our report? So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of faith. We need to go and let them hear and hear. And let them do what? Hear and hear. And faith will come up and they will believe on the Lord in Jesus' name. So the Lord will help us. We do what the Lord has asked us to do. Preach the gospel of Christ, a commandment. We will preach it in Jesus' name. And we go to second point. How to preach the gospel. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Verse 10 to 13. The book of Psalm 51. Verse 10 to 13. 13. This is so important because without it, we don't need to preach the gospel. It says here, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then and only will I teach transgressors thy ways. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. He said, If I, a believer, backslide and living in sin, and I'm no more clean, and I'm now dirty before God, he said, I can't preach. He said, What? I can't teach transgressors thy way. And sinners cannot be converted unto you. Because the blind cannot lead the blind. He said, That's why he said, Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Now, let me still explain that verse 10 clearly. He said, Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart. Help me. Let me be born again. To be back and reunited with you. But I need the right spirit also. Not the spirit that will be lifting myself instead of lifting God. This is King David. He needed the right spirit. And everybody knew King David for wanting the man after God's own heart. He never lift himself up. But he lifts up who? God. But he backslided. He needed to come back to God. And he don't want to come back to God halfway. And now, be lifting up himself. He said, create in me the right spirit. And the Lord will help us that we have the right spirit to lift up Jesus. Because he said, and I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And he now said, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. The joy that I'm now back to the Lord. I'm now a child of God again. And uphold me with thy free spirit. He said, then. Will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto you. So, which means, to preach the gospel, one needs to be born again. And backslider needs to be restored unto the Lord. Anyone that is not born again, or backslider that have not been returned unto the Lord, is preaching the gospel, or preaching the gospel adds no value. Because, he will be doing himself and the sinner's harm. Because his preaching will be an abomination. And his preaching will be bringing offenses. In the sense that instead of people coming to the Lord, he drive them away from the Lord. Because they will say, this person is also preaching the gospel. This sinner. I'm even better than him. I'm even better than her. You understand? It will now be hindering souls from coming to the Lord genuinely. And it can only make them to be a community member instead of being a member of the kingdom of God. And that's what we see in many places. And we pray God that it will not be so with us here in Jesus' name. So, now, how do we preach the gospel of Christ if one is born again? One, tell people what Christ has done for you and bring them to Jesus to receive the same thing from him. 
Very simple. Let's look at the book of John chapter 4, verse 28 to 32. John chapter 4, verse 28 to 32. John chapter 4, verse 28 to 32. The woman then left her water pot and went away into the city and said to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciple prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have me to eat that ye know not of. You see, Jesus, when you go to preach, Jesus knows that meat is already coming to him. Souls are already what? Coming to him. He will be expecting them. And we see this woman. He went and told the people, Come and see the man that told me all things I ever did. Is this not the Christ? The person that revealed all my secrets to me. Is this not the Christ? So he told them what Christ did unto him. And it attracted them to Christ. That's one of the ways to preach. We tell the people what Christ has done for us. What he has done through us and what he has done in our life. And it will attract souls to Christ. It brings them to Christ. And it even it brings those that have in false hope to the right hope. False salvation to the right salvation. When we tell them what Christ has done for us. And the Lord will make them to get the written in Jesus' name. Because some just believe it's only money, money, money. But when they now see that Christ transformed the life of this, from being like this to be like this, then they will know, ah, though I was thinking it's money, money, my life still needs to be transformed. You understand? Now they will know Christ can do it also for them and will lead them to Christ in Jesus' name. Verse 39. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him. For the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all that ever I did. B. Tell them the word of Jesus Christ. We read it before. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 4. He said, preach the word. Preach the word, not fables. Preach what? The word, not fables. That's what 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2 says. Preach the word. Preach the word. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2 says, preach the word. We are not to preach fables. We are not to preach our tradition. We are not to preach philosophies of men. Preach the word. Preach the word. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. See, tell them what Christ Jesus can do and has done for many. In the book of Mark chapter 7 verse 37. He said, he has done all things well. Let's read it. Mark chapter 7, verse 37. And we are beyond measure astonished, saying, he hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. So when we tell them all Jesus has done for many, all he can do, what he can do and what all he has done for many people. Then it will attract them to Christ. D. Tell them of the love of God. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. How many fathers have given up their son because of one person or the other? None. Except to God. So tell them of the love of God and tell he, tell them of the love of Christ. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 16, 
that he know there is no love greater than this that one should give down his life for his friend. And in John chapter 10, verse 15 to 18, we see that Jesus laid down his life for his flock and took it up again by himself. So tell them, F, tell them of the danger of sin. Tell them of what? The danger of sin. In Psalm 9, 17, the wicked shall be turned to hell and all those that forget God. They shall be turned to hell fire where they will burn forever. Tell H, tell them of the only route of escape from sin and its consequences. John chapter 14 verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto the Father but by me. And in John chapter 10 verse 10, he said, The thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come to give life and life abundantly. So, it is the only route of escape from sin and the consequence of sin. Let's take us to the last point. In brief, danger of not preaching the gospel. Are there danger of not preaching the gospel to us and to others? Yes, to us first, we look at the book of Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17 to 21. It says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require a die and son of man. God said that made you a washman. He has made us washmen and washwomen. He said if he say of the wicked he shall die because of his sin and go to hell. And we refuse to warn the wicked. And like we heard in the self scripture, the wicked doesn't mean somebody that carry gun or knife or things like that. Anybody that commits sin is in that category of the wicked. And he said, if you don't warn him, you don't want her, and he dies, he goes to hell, God will require their blood from thy hand. So we our own go and preach. The danger so that their blood will not be required from thy hand, so that you will not miss heaven just because of not preaching to others. Even though you live a life pleasing to God, but for not preaching to others, then you now miss heaven. That would be a great lamentation. So that is why we must escape this danger, preach the gospel, but we must not preach the gospel only because of that. We must preach in love. So he said, Yet if thou warn the wicked, verse 19, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. If you preach to him and he refuse to repent, thou hast delivered thy soul. You show them that worldliness takes to hell, <coughs> and they refuse to repent. Thou hast <coughs> delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin. And his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thy hand. You see, that is why we need to tell even those that we are righteous. We see them going into worldliness. Little by little. They entice them into worldliness. Before we know, they are already in the worldliness. 
We want them. If we don't want them, all their righteousness will be forgotten. All their righteousness will be what? Forgotten. And when all their righteousness is forgotten, God said, But his blood will I require at thy hand. So that their blood will not be required from our hands, we tell them. Whether they like it or not. We understand. He said, Nevertheless, if thou want the righteous man, that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is one. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. If you want him, he now take it. You have delivered him. And at the same time, thou hast delivered thy own soul. Look at James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Verse 19 and 20. Let's look at it. James chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. The Bible says here, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, you see, you see, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, that is, it's now a sin I err from the truth. So, at times people don't know. When one stray away from God and stray into worldliness, it's now like unbeliever. You need to be converted back to the truth. You understand? And one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner, that one that stray is now called what? Sinner, he that converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide the multitude of sin. Praise the Lord. So we see, these are the danger. If we don't convert the person, bring the person back to the right way, the person is going to hell fire. That's the danger of not preaching. Now, we see also in uh, Second Kings, we are not going to read everything there, but let's just look at, uh, learn something from there. Second Kings chapter 7, Second Kings chapter 7, verse 3 and 4. And there were four leper, leprous men at the entering in of the gate, and they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say, we will enter into the city. Then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit there uh, still here, we will die also. Now, therefore, come and let us fall unto the host of the uh, Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. So, actually, what happened here, the Syrian had besieged the land of uh, uh, Israel, and those in, a, uh, in Samaria, they were not able to go out to buy or anything, so there was hunger. The hunger was so great that even uh, women were eating their children. So, now, this leper, hunger was, uh, they were hungry also, but they are not accepted in the city. But they know that there is food in the camp of the Syrian. They said, if we stay here, we will die of hunger. If we go to the Syrian, they will kill us. They are enemy of Israel. But nevertheless, it's better we go there where there is food. If they keep us, didn't kill us, we will be alive. If they kill us, we will die. So, let's go. You know, at times, believer will say, if I go and preach to them, hmm, they will be angry with me. If I don't preach to them, if they end up in hellfire, they will be angry with me. They better go and preach to them. If they accept the gospel and not be angry with you, then everything is okay. If they don't accept they are angry with you let it be you understand so that's what this lep uh, leprous men did and they went to the camp and behold when they got there the lord has brought a kind of sound that the people thought a lot of army are coming after them they ran they left all their food and everything their clothes and everything these four leprous men they ate and were satisfied 
They even took clothes and everything. They start hiding them. But later on, they now said, oh, we did not do well. That we are here we are, we are eating, we are enjoying, and people are dying in the city, in Samaria. If we remain till the next morning, something evil will fall upon us. They now say, let's go and tell the king. Wherefore, they arose and went and told the king and told them that there is food there. The Syrian has run. They brought the good news. Why can't we that have tasted Christ and seen that there is life in Christ? There is salvation in Christ. There is transformation of life in Christ. There is a, a pathway to heaven in Christ. And there is joy, abundant joy, an abundant life in Christ. Why can't we go and tell others? Why will we let them perish and leave them there? They are suffering and we are enjoying everything. Why not go out and tell them and say, Come to Christ, there is abundance of life. Come to Christ, there is abundance of our joy. Come to Christ, there is grace. There is the bread of life. Come and receive. And we are going to tell them to come and receive. And they will enjoy together with us in Christ. In Jesus name. Let's stand upon our feet and tell the Lord. We we'll go and tell them. We we'll go and tell them. We we'll do like those four leprous men did. After they have seen that there is food. And they have enjoyed the food. They went and told the people of Samaria. And they came and enjoyed along with them. We will go and tell them. We will go and tell them. That they will come and enjoy with us in the Lord. That they will come and serve the Lord together with us. That they will come and hear the word of the Lord. They will come and surrender to Christ. And serve Serve him in truth and spirit. We will go and tell them. We will go and tell them. We will go to every corner. We will go to the mountain. We will go to the valley. We will go to the uh, street corners. We tell the people everywhere, everywhere, everywhere that Jesus is alive. That Jesus is the Savior. He is the way to heaven. He is the transformer, uh, transformer of life. He can transform their life. He can change their life. He can take them to heaven. He can deliver them from hell. He can deliver them from hell by saving them from their sins and the consequence of sin. Tell the Lord, you will go and tell them. You will go and tell them. You will go and tell them. You will not allow their blood to be required from your hands. As you see the righteous that is going astray, you will warn the righteous so that the righteous will turn back to the Lord. And you tell the sinners to come to the Lord, to forsake their sin and turn to the Lord. You will preach. You will preach. You will preach. You will preach. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord you will do it. 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 Talk to the Lord. 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 Souls are dying and going to hell. Souls are dying and going to hell. Men and women, boys and girls, rich and poor, educated and illiterate, they are dying daily, dying daily and going to hell. Will you let multitude rush into hell as water are rushing out of the top? Will you allow multitude to rush into hell? In thousands they are rushing into hell. Won't you save them from hell by telling them the truth? By telling them the truth. Spread the good news. Spread the good news. Spread the good news. In Jesus' name we pray. Father Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for the way you've spoken unto us this day. We thank for thy word we've heard, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that as we have sung and, and as we have, uh, have uh, promised, O oh Lord, in our prayer, O oh Lord, you epish and every one of us, O oh Lord, that none of us, O oh Lord, Lord God, we delay, but we go and preach the gospel to every creature in Jesus' name. And Lord God, that in their multitude they will come out and serve you in truth and in spirit. They will do that which is pleasing unto you, and they will be prepared for heaven, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Help us, O Lord, that we will not go and empty and dead, O Lord. That we will go, we will proceed souls to present to you, Lord, even on that day, in Jesus' name. 
glorify the holy name, O Lord. Help us even to talk to the righteous that are deviating, O Lord. Even, Lord God, so that they might be restored and not die in their sin. In Jesus' name. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we rejoice, Lord God, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray.